Now, some people skip steps and you know who they are, right? They skip the step and they just want to try to add value to people and they want to give their opinions all the time. Hey, man, you should be doing this. Hey, you, you, hey, you better go do this, right? But you don't see them adding value to themselves and then they're just spousing off these opinions. And so what you got to look at is, hey, wait a minute. Are they add, adding value to themselves? Are they making themselves better? Because if they are, then man, I want some of that. Thank you. Super excited to be here with you. Uh, so yes, that's what I do. This is what my wife and I started. This is Austin Luxury Home Magazine. This is San Antonio Luxury Home Magazine. Uh, those of you that raise your hand, you've seen it, right? And if you see it at your HEB, right? Uh, you know, this was a dream, right? This was a dream. But I, I, I need you to understand today, what we're gonna be talking about is having the right mindset. Because I want you to know, when I was 17 years old, right? Most of you are 17, 18, is that about the ballpark, right? When I was 17 or 18 years old, I didn't realize my life was on a trajectory to own my own business. To be able to fly to Hong Kong for a leadership conference. I didn't, I didn't have that, that wasn't in my mind at 17 and 18 years old. I thought I was gonna go into the NBA. Why y'all laughing? I, I mean, literally, I played at Hayes High School, Jack C. Hayes, the Rebels. Y'all know the Rebels, right? And I thought legitimately I was going to get recruited by UT, but they didn't call. And I was really bummed. I mean, not only did UT, UT not call, I didn't even get a call from like these, you know, smaller schools, like, you know, like uh, either a Trinity or some of the smaller schools for sports. I didn't get any calls. And so I ended up playing at Wayland Baptist. Has anybody ever heard of Wayland Baptist in Plainview, Texas? That's where I ended up playing, really, really small school, really small school. I think there was like 250 people on campus. It was like a small high school on campus. It was, a, it was unreal. But what I wanna share with you, my talk today is about having the right mindset and developing it. And so you have on your desk there, uh, I want you, you're gonna see there, there's a, there's a rope in the elephant story that we're gonna talk about. And I'm gonna need one. Does anybody, is there an extra that, that I can have? You could bring it to me. The rope and the elephant. I, we're gonna talk about that. You can leave it on that side of the page. Uh, oh, perfect, Todd, thank you. So as you know, as he just told you, my, uh, I own Luxury Home Magazine and I also own a pre-K academy. It's a dual language pre-K academy. Uh, to teach kids Spanish. Uh, it's amazing. My wife and I actually were able to take that opportunity in 2015. I also started my speaking website where I do speaking and Gabe, uh, who is with me now, he's my full-time videographer. We do videos, we do all kinds of stuff. You can see all that on my website. But I, but I really need you to understand something. I didn't know, Jackson, that I would be in this position right here talking to you when I was 17 or 18 years old. I had no clue, no clue. And so as you're sitting here, I wanna tell you that though you may not know the end result where you're gonna be, I'm 45 years old, okay? You may not know where you're gonna be at 45, but if you choose the right mindset now and you continue to choose the right mindset, the place where you're gonna end up will be radically more amazing than what you could have ever dreamed because that's what I'm living today. That's what I'm able to live today. And so the, I need to tell you about elephants before we read this story. And y'all know anything about elephants? I'm gonna tell you five cool facts about elephants, all right? This is really cool. Elephants are the largest animals in the world. I think most of you know that. Uh, there's 40,000 muscles in their trunk that's more than 230 times the number in the human body, just in the trunk of the elephant. Okay, keep that in mind. Elephants can live to over 70 years old. What's the average age of most humans? Do y'all know that? 78, 80, somewhere in that ballpark, right? Elephants have poor eyesight, but amazing sense of smell. And elephants can cry, play, and have incredible memories. And look at that last one. Elephants can what? They can laugh. 
right? Now, knowing that, I need you to hear this story as we start out, because this whole topic is about mindset. Everything that I'm going to talk about is your mindset, okay? And I, I do Mindset Mondays. I do these videos where I talk about the power of the mindset. And I think it's really important to understand this story. Now, some of you may have heard this story, and that's okay. But there's a piece to this story that always returns back to mindset. So follow along with me. Mindset begins with understanding. Your attempt may fail, but never fail to make an attempt. As my friend was passing the elephants, he suddenly stopped, confused by the fact that these huge creatures were being held only by a small rope tied to their front leg. Have you ever seen this? Have you ever seen elephants where they're just at, uh, uh, whether it be a, a, a zoo or whatever? And I think they have an elephant experience out here somewhere in the hill country. And they just have them tied up with a little rope, right? No chains, no cages. It was obvious that the elephant could at any time break away from those ropes. They were tied too, but for some reason they did not. My friend saw a trainer nearby, nearby and he said, uh, why these beautiful majestic animals could just stood there and made no attempt to get away. Well, he said, when they're very young and much smaller, we use the same size rope to tie them. And at that age, it is enough to hold them. As they grow up, they are conditioned to believe they cannot break away. Circle that, circle that. They are conditioned to believe they cannot break away. They believe the rope can still hold them. So they never try to break free. My friend was amazed. These animals could at any time break free from their bonds, but because they believed they couldn't, they were stuck right where they were. Now, like elephants, me, how many of us go through life hanging on to a belief or a mindset that we cannot do something simply because we failed at it once before. You see, the elephant had a certain type of mindset. And I wanna see if you can figure this out. Are you ready? So there are two types of mindsets that I learned about as I, uh, I started reading, you know, a lot. As I got out of college, you know, up until that point, I really wasn't a reader. But as soon as I got out of college, I just started feeling, I was teaching and I just started reading and reading and reading. And I found this book by Dr. Carol Dweck. And she wrote a book called Mindset. I really would say this is a must read. So there are two types where your mindset breaks down. It breaks down in either fixed or into growth. Now, everybody on the count of three, you're gonna tell me which one you think the elephant has. On the count of three, which one is the elephant? Is it, is it growth or fix? One, two, three. Fixed. Oh, okay. We got a sharp group here. All right, I like it. It's a fixed mindset. Now, this is really important, Ethan, because a fixed mindset, look at what it does to the largest animal in the world. What did it do to the largest animal in the world? It makes it think that a tiny rope holds it into the in the ground and it cannot move beyond that rope. That's a fixed mindset. Now, look at the definition, flip your paper over. We're gonna fill in the blanks here. On one side, I want you to put fixed at the top underneath that one. And then on the other side, I want you to put growth. Now look at the definition of fixed mindset. Believing that your qualities are carved in stone, fixed. Your qualities are carved in stone. Have any of you ever felt that? Where it's like, I don't know if I can get better at this. Can we all be honest? Can I raise my hand to that question? I've felt that at times, right? Look at growth. A belief that your basic qualities are things you can cultivate through your efforts. Ooh, growth, right? So you have these two ideas, fixed and growth. And so I wanna read something to you. I'm gonna say it out loud. I'm gonna read some statements. These statements are just really easy. And what I want you to tell me 
is whether you think these statements, is this a statement of growth or is this a statement of a fixed mindset? All right. Are you ready? Who thinks you're going to get this? Fixed mindset, right? If I fail a test, I'll never get better. Fixed, right? That is a fixed mindset, right? Now, what about this one? Failure is limit of my abilities. Listen to it again. Failure is the limit of my abilities. Fixed, right? What about this one? I like to try new things. Okay, we all can agree with that, right? That's a growth mindset, right? What about this one? Wanted to know why they got a problem wrong on a test. Ooh, now let's be honest, you ready? I, 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 I'm really curious about this because I remember high school, all right? I'm gonna take myself, Addison, back to high school, all right? I want to tell you about a time where I bombed a test. And it, it happened a couple times. Anybody bomb a test? Okay, good, you guys are honest, I love it, right? Now. I want you to know, do you think Tomas was a fixture growth? Let me tell you what happened. I failed the test and the teacher said, now go back and check your answers and look up why you missed them. And what did Tomas do? I was like, I don't care. What kind of mindset was that? That's a fixed mindset. And see, because I wasn't willing to go back and look, was I gonna be able to grow in that area? You can't grow. Now, you ready? Let's be honest. How many of you have a fixed mindset sometimes when it comes to when you take a test and you're like, I'm just gonna move on? Anybody else like me? Okay, thank you. All right, now, be honest. Who in here, when they see that test and they go, I gotta go back and check every answer to make sure the teacher's right? Anybody do that? Okay, we got a couple. I like that, <laughs> I like that. Like, I'm not real sure this teacher knows what's going on here. Let me go back and check, right? What kind of mindset is that? That's a growth mindset, right? Can we all agree that's a growth mindset? Now the power of this, let me just tell you the power of this. When you truly grab a hold of the growth mindset, and that is you're not fixed in stone, you are a work in progress, right? Problems are just problems, they are not the end. What happens when you step up to a problem or you step up to a test and you fail? Do you step back and go, man, I'm really dumb? Or do you look at it from the perspective of what? Maybe I didn't study well enough. What did I not study? What can I grow? How can I grow from this? So these two mindsets will determine, I'm telling you right now, these two mindsets will determine your trajectory. If you stay stuck in a fixed mindset to where you think you're carved in stone, life will become very, very difficult over time. I had to slowly realize that I wasn't gonna be in the NBA, right? I had to slowly come to this realization and go, okay, what am I going to do? And I found teaching as a career and I absolutely loved my job. And then I realized I'm a fifth, uh, third, my first uh, grade was third grade, right? So I'm teaching third graders. And I don't like to read at that point, right? I'd gotten out of college, I don't like to read. And I'm looking at this group of third graders and what do you think I could tell right away about these third graders? None of them like to read. Like when it came to reading time, they didn't wanna read. And I sat back and I go, okay, this is a, this is a problem, right? I need to create a growth mindset with these kids. How do I create a growth mindset is first I have to learn to really enjoy reading. And so what I started doing is getting as many books as I could to learn about reading. And then as I did that, what did I pass on to those kids? Do y'all remember uh, AR, uh, Accelerated Reader, where you would read the book and take the test? Y'all remember that, right? Wasn't that awesome, right? Some of you were like, no, I hated it, right? Let me tell you about AR. My kids, I taught on the east side of San Antonio, Camelot Elementary, right behind Roosevelt High School. My kids crushed AR. 
They loved it. Why? Because it gave them something to grow. They would read and then they would take a test and then they would know. That was, uh, we were creating a growth mindset. This is so important. Now, as we go through this, I'm gonna go for the, f the five steps to develop the, the right mindset, okay? And if you look down at the bottom of the paper, you have the five right there. You see that, that R-E-A, you see that down there? So you'll just follow along. Number one, responsibility is a pathway to meaning. Developing the right mindset comes down to understanding that responsibility gives you meaning. Responsibility gives you meaning. I'll talk about that a little more. Number two, engage in the process. Engage in the process. If you want to develop the right mindset, you have to stay in the process and I will tell you, as a, a former, you know, high school athlete, I did all those things. As a former athlete, I can tell you that the process is what makes progress. It's the process that will give you that progress. Sometimes we don't want to stay in that long enough to see the progress. Number three, acquiring the steps in the value cycle. Now, remember I told you I'm a reader. Has anybody heard of John Maxwell? John Maxwell? Oh, yes. Yes. John Maxwell, big mentor of mine. I've got to meet him a few times. He talks about the value cycle. And I want to teach that to you because if you learn this at this age, if you learn the value cycle, Parker at this age, right? Emily at this age, you learn this cycle, whoo, there's no stopping you. There is no stopping you. Number four, change your view of failure. You wanna develop the right mindset, you need to look at failure differently. You need to look at failure differently. And I'll talk through that. And the last one, health is wealth. Now I know you're looking at me and you're going, Tomas, I'm 18 years old. I'm 17 years old. I'm in the best, best shape of my life. I mean, I'm eating Cheetos three days a week. Cokes on the weekend, or maybe at Red Bull every day, I don't know. But you're thinking, I'm in the bed. Listen, I'm gonna tell you something. The most important thing that you have is your health. And if you develop the right mindset at 17, 18, 19 years old, your body will carry you longer with more energy, with more passion, with more purpose than you'll ever imagine. But health it's wealth and you need to develop the right mindset about that. So let's get into this. Responsibility is the pathway to meaning. What do I mean by that? Well, let's think of future you, right? Um, I'm just gonna say, just don't, can we all just say, we can be honest and talk to each other, right? I want you to just raise your hand and tell me, what does future you look like? What do you wanna be? What do you wanna do? Now, I have an 11 year old, my son, I ask this to him all the time and it changes, he's 11. First it was FBI, right? Then it was like, he wanted to be a WWE wrestler, right? That was one point that he went through, one phase, right? And so now he's just kind of like, I don't know, I'm maybe investigator. So I'm just curious, tell me future you, say it out loud. What do you wanna be, what do you wanna do? Go, who? Nurse practitioner, love it, keep going. Musician. Musician, thank you, Allison, keep going. Chemical engineer, love it. Keep over here, come on. Coach, Coach. football, bat, baseball, anything? Yes, love it, okay. Oh, your name tag fell, what's your name? Matthew. Matthew, thank you, Matthew, what else? Physical therapist, Physical therapist. okay, very cool, come on. Archive. Say again? Psychiatrist. Psychiatrist? Architect. Architect, okay, anybody else? Surgeon. surgeon, somebody said surgeon. Okay, now, if anybody's sitting in this room, and, and, and like, let's, can we be real? Can we all just be honest? Is anybody going, no idea. I would, I would high five you right now, but you know, because of COVID, we're just gonna do an air high five. Anybody else? Air high five, air high five. Anybody else? That's okay, that's okay. Listen, this is the beauty of being 17, 18, 19, right? But here's what I wanna tell you. You may not know where you're headed. I did not know I would be standing right here, owner of a few businesses, speaking to you with this magazine, my wife and I having the success that we've had. I did not know I would be in this moment right now with you. I did not know that, but here we are. But here's the thing. 
the reason why I'm here is because future you is coming. It's coming, right? Your future is coming. And it's gonna get here whether you're prepared or not. Because I don't want you to be in this position. Okay? Any Simpson fans? No Simpson fan. Okay, we got a couple. All right. All right. I'm not a Simpson fan, but I heard this story and it it, it was like, this is perfect. Here's the deal. Homer walks into the living room and Marge is giving him a really hard time. And he's just like not listening, not listening. He has a bottle of mayonnaise and a bottle of vodka. He pours the vodka into the mayonnaise, shakes it up, drinks it and says, that's a problem for future Homer. And then he passes out. (laughs) Now, don't don't miss the power of that statement. That's a problem for future Homer. But I want to switch it, right? I want to switch it up a little bit. That's a problem for future Tomas. Because if you live in a space where you're not going to take responsibility, future you is going to be very disappointed. So what does responsibility do? When you step into responsibility and do the things you know you need to do, what does that do for your life? It gives you meaning. It gives you purpose. It gives you the opportunity to live into what you're supposed to be and do. And so if you want to develop the right mindset, you have to understand that you have a responsibility right now. You're all seniors in high school, right? You have a responsibility. What do your parents want? They want you to do have good grades. What else do they want? College College applications. Go to college. What else do they want? Uh, get, Get a job. Is that what you said? Yes, get a job. They want you to work. I love it. My, I worked. I worked at HEB. I was a bagger. It was awesome, right? It was awesome. Now, do your parents also want you to be a good person? Don't know. I mean, that's the one thing I talk to my son all about. We always talk about being a gentleman, being a gentleman, right? Your parents, what if you had the best grades in the world, but you were just a jerk and you were just mean and ugly? I don't know. I'd rather take nice and maybe a B or two right? I just, to me, being a good person is a good thing. So the responsibility gives you meaning and it's powerful. Responsibility gives you meaning. The next one, engage in the process. Now I did boxing for a really long time before I went into triathlon training. I just started my triathlon training to prepare for uh, the Ironman process. But before that, I was with Tony. Now look at Tony. Does Tony look like he, he just wants to hurt you? Yeah, to, Tony is serious. Tony wears a hat that says, trust the process. Now, I worked with Tony since 2016, three days a week. He got me in the best shape of my life. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm at 40 and I've kind of got some abs showing at 40, which is a pretty amazing thing at 40, right? That was because Tony made me trust the process, right? Engage in the process. No, what do you think I mean by that? The idea is the process is whatever it's going to take for you to get where you want to go. If you say college, right, college applications, right? If we're talking about that process, that means do we just kind of dabble and do it whenever we feel like it? Or do we have to engage in the process until we get to the end result? Right now, Can I, again, be honest, at 17, 18 years old, do you think it's easy to stay in process? It's so hard. You've got something that is literally killing every desire and motivation at every point in your pocket. You realize you're holding a more powerful computer than I had ever in high school right here. Like I was typing on green screen computers and doing like coding. 10 print, like just crazy stuff. And you have all of that right here, right? But this can become a distraction for the process. It can pull you away from doing what you need to do. Now, I'm about to show you a picture that it may cause some controversy. I hope not. Anybody know what this is? 
Ooh, who, who said that? My man right here. Say, say it out loud for everybody. That's the Popeye's chicken sandwich. Who's had the Popeye's chicken sandwich? Don't lie. All right. Okay. Now, let's, let, can we, we, let, we'll be honest, right? How amazing is that sandwich? Elijah. It's ridiculous. Okay. Like if you put a Popeye's chicken sandwich next, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. If you put it next to Chick-fil-A, it's really sad. You put them right next to each other. You're just like, I don't know. Give me that Popeye's, right? It's such an amazing sandwich. But here's what I want to tell you. I want to teach you something. You see, having the right mindset means you got to stay in the process. You got to engage in the process. Do you know what happened to Popeye's chicken? They had all this media. They had all this attention. And what happened? You don't know? They couldn't sell them. But here's the sad part. Elijah, it wasn't the chicken. It was, they didn't have the buns. They couldn't get buns for the chicken. So you could go there and you could order the little chicken sandwich part, but you just didn't get it on a bun. You see, they weren't engaged in the process. They weren't looking and staying in the process. What I think happened is that viral event happened. And as that viral event happened, all the executives look up and go, yes, finally, we can put a dent in Chick-fil-A. And they didn't engage in the process. They didn't stick with it. And they run out of buns. Now, I want to ask you something. Has Chick-fil-A ever run out of chicken? Has that ever happened? Have you ever gone there and they go, you know what? We don't have buns today. That's never happened. Why? Because they're in the process. Now, how does this work for you? Here's how it works for you as a 17, 18 year old. The process means, this is the hard part, right? We, we see I'm here, but I want to get up there. I want to get to wherever that top of the mountain is. Now, when we look and we look at that, Sometimes we want to imagine someone picking us up. Can you just put me up there? Can you just take me and just set me up at the top where I'm at? I don't want to have to go through the pain and the process. I don't want to have to go through that because that's hard. Now, what happens if that happens? If someone just picked you up and put you in charge of a hundred employee company, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> you have no experience, right? You're going to walk in there and be like, uh, guys, I'm a little nervous. Um, let's see how this works, right? You don't know what's going to happen. But see, here's the idea. The process prepares you along the way. So you're looking at me and you're going, man, Tomas, where did you learn how to speak? Well, you see, in the process, when I was in sixth grade, I did a speech in front of my entire sixth grade class, all sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. I did a speech on my bio biography of Michael Jordan. I dressed up like him the whole night. That was one of my first public speeches. And then from there, I went into college and I was doing, you know, you have to do presentations. And then I went into school. I became a teacher. You know, when you're a third or fourth grade teacher, what are you doing all day? You're performing right? You're constantly teaching and practicing. While I was a teacher, I was a traveling speaker, educator for other teachers. I would go all across Texas teaching other teachers about how to get the most out of their students. You see, what if I didn't go through that process and someone asked me to speak into a group of seniors like today? I didn't go through the process. I didn't speak in front of all those people. And then someone just said, hey, can you come speak? And I'm up here to. You see, the process prepared me for this moment in time. You've got to go through the process. Now, you know the story of the butterfly in the cocoon, right? Y'all have heard this story? I'll tell you very quickly because it's really important. There was a gentleman that saw the butterfly was trying to get out of the cocoon. He, he, and he sees the struggle. So he goes and takes a really fine scapula, right? A little scapula, no, it's, is that right? Yes, the little, uh, uh, the knife, right? He takes it and he cuts a fine little slit and all of a sudden the wings pop out and the butterfly is sitting there. But there was a major problem. Anybody want to know what happened? The butterfly couldn't fly. Do you know why? 
Not because he touched it. Who said that? Who said that? The butterfly needed the struggle inside the cocoon, inside that thing to strengthen its wings. And while it's doing all that, doing all that, all of a sudden he comes and cuts it. Its wings pop out, but they weren't strong enough to fly. And it just sat there. You see, if you're expecting someone to shortcut the process, I'm telling you right now, you're going to be like the butterfly. Your wings aren't going to be ready and you're not going to be able to fly to the true heights that you need to fly to. The process is so important. Don't be like Popeyes and jump out of the process. Stay in it as long as possible. All right. And, uh, so there is no progress without there is no progress without process. Right. Uh, do you, have you ever heard that fra phrase practice makes? Who said that practice makes what? Well, now think about what you just said. Pra is that true or is that a myth? Does practice make perfect? But we say it all the time. And I finally told my son, I said, no, 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 no. We have to eliminate that statement from now on. What does practice make? Progress, right? Practice makes progress. Because if you're perfect at any point, whoo, man. I mean, you, we gotta, you might be walking on water or something, right? We got we to gotta watch out for that person that's perfect like that. So you need to engage in the process so that you can have progress. Now, acquire the value cycle. Um, I'm going to wrap up here just a second. Let me get through this. The value cycle. This is important. Now, what is the value cycle? Number one, John Maxwell says you have to see value in yourself first. This is really important mindset to have. You have to believe in you first, who you are, right? You have to believe in yourself. This is so important, right? So as a, as a graduating senior, I remember th just having this, this like, okay, what am I going to do next? This feeling, right? But I really didn't fully understand seeing the value in who I was. This is so important because when you see value, when you know you have value, when you know who you are, right? For those of you believers, right? When you know who you are, the next step is you can now add value to yourself. Don't miss this step. This is really important. If I don't see myself having value, is it easy to add value to yourself? If, you're, if you think and you look at yourself and all you see is negative, are you going to want to go read a book to add value to yourself? If you're only in a negative mindset, it's really difficult to add value to yourself when you're in a negative mindset about who you are, right? But now watch this. Are you ready? Here's the complete cycle. You ready? I see value for myself, right, Matthew? I then add value to myself. And now what can I do? I can now turn and add value to others. Now, some people skip steps and you know who they are, right? They skip the step and they just want to try to add value to people and they want to give their opinions all the time. Hey, man, you should be doing this. Hey, you, you, hey, you better go do this, right? But you don't see them adding value to themselves and then they're just spousing off these opinions and so what you got to look at is, hey, wait a minute. Are they add, adding value to themselves? Are they making themselves better? Because if they are, then man, I want some of that. So I look at it like this. Leadership, right, is kind of like, you know, you have your, your glass full. So I see value in what I have and who I am, right? And then I start adding more value. And I start putting more into my bucket. Now, what happens at a certain point as I keep adding value? I read a new book. I meet new people. I learn more from other people, like the speaker that we had just before you. I learned something from that speech. So I put it in. After a while, what's going to happen? Oh, who said it? It overflows, right? And when it starts to overflow, now what can I do? I can start sharing it with other people.
Now, here's the problem with leadership. Remember, this is the right mindset, acquiring the right mindset. The mindset is, if your bucket of leadership, if your value is low and you're not adding value, what's gonna slowly start to happen? You see the analogy right here? What's gonna slowly start to happen? It's gonna go really, really down, 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 down. And then there's gonna be a point where you're just like, oh my, I don't have anything to add. Well, why don't you have anything to add? Why? What would be the reason why you don't have anything to add? You're not valuing yourself, right? And you're not adding value to yourself. This is the mindset that you're gonna to have to take this year and even into college. This mindset is so important. Now change your view of failure, right? Failure. Um, when you hear that word, tell me what comes to your mind. Failure, F, you got an F, what comes to your mind? Say it out loud. Say it out loud. What? A grade, love it, what else? Failure, F, come on, what comes to your mind? Sad, yeah, what else? Did you say sad, is that what you said? Bad, bad. Ooh, you think bad, okay, thank you. What else? Oh, thank you. What's your name? Aaron, Aaron said stress, I love that. Stress, upset, upset. thank you, right? Now, I, I, I wanted to hit, this is something, and I, and I appreciate the comments here, because I wanna help you change your view of failure, right? I wish I had heard this at 17 and 18, what I'm about to tell you. I wish someone had told me this. And I guarantee you what I'm about to tell you, your parents have told you over and over and over. They've mentioned what I'm about to tell you. They've talked through it. But sometimes it doesn't seep in because, you know, mom and dad, when they say it, it's kind of like, Yoop. but some dude that comes and he's like, he's in a suit and he owns a business and he's kind of like, oh, that sounds kind of cool. And you're going to go home and you know what I learned today? I got to change my view of failure. And your parents are going to look at you and go, really? Right? Really? So I want you to change your view of failure. How do you do that? Number one, you need to keep this in mind. Sometimes you win, sometimes you... Oh, see? So you have the wrong idea. It's not sometimes you lose. See, we got to change this mindset. Sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. Sometimes you learn. This is from an amazing book by John Maxwell. He even has a teen version of this book. Sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. Now, if you talk to any football coach, Matthew, he'll tell you this, right? Any football coach will tell you, they learn more from which one, wins or losses? You learn more from losses. Think about that for a second. You take a loss and you're sitting there and you're going, oh, we can learn more from this. That's a different view when you're 17 or 18 and you're sitting there and you go, we just lost a game. And your coaches are like, okay, we learned something this week. We didn't block right. We didn't do this right. Now, let's flip this to your grades. You take a test and you fail. Now, remember at the very beginning of this lesson, I told you there are two types of mindsets that you can fall trap. Now, there are times when you're in growth and sometimes you're in fix. Right? Where do we want to force ourselves to get to? Growth, growth, growth. So when you fail on a test, if we want to develop the right view of failure, you want to look at that test and go, okay, what can I learn from this failure? Right? Now, I've been in business 10 years. Do you think I've made a lot of mistakes? Made a lot of mistakes. And I made some like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that mistakes. I've had to pick up the phone and go, Whew. you're not gonna believe this, but I made a really big mistake, right? And what do you think happens in that? Do I blame my employees? Do I run to my employees and say, you guys blew it, you're terrible. No, I gotta learn from it and I have to step in with the right mindset. So if when you fail, you gotta own it. When you fail, you have to own it. This is so important. Now, what do you think I mean by own it? Take responsibility. Because remember, responsibility is the pathway to meaning, right? Responsibility is a pathway to meaning. 
So when you fail, you have to own it. Now I'm gonna tell you between now and the time you graduate, there's gonna be a lot of I'm sorry's to mom and dad. Can we all agree? There's gonna be a lot of I'm sorry's. There's gonna be like, you know what? I need to own this, I failed, and I'm gonna learn from this because I'm gonna live in a growth mindset I'm not going to sit here and go, I'm the worst person ever. I'll never, I'll never amount to anything. That's a fixed mindset. Okay, that's a fixed mindset. You can step into a growth mindset. Number two, look for the lesson, not the excuse. Now, I told you I have an 11-year-old, right? Now, my 11-year-old, I will tell him, hey, you need to do this. Make sure you do this. And typically, we're at this stage where he wants to, like, negotiate, Right? And, I, and, I, and he knows the rules. I don't negotiate with terrorists, right? I don't negotiate with terrorists, right? So the rule is, is like I look at him and I'm like, I asked you to do this. And then he looks at me and he's like, oh. now we're working through because when he fails, I want him to see what? What do I want him to see? The lesson. Right? I don't want to sit there and I don't, I don't want him to give me all the excuses. I want to stop and go, okay, what can we learn from this situation? What can we learn from this situation? Typically the response, whenever you get caught or whenever you get failed, there's an automatic, it's like a, it's like a knee jerk reaction. You just want to make up an excuse. But see, if you're gonna step in with the right mindset, with a growth mindset, you're gonna take responsibility, you're gonna own it, and you can say, you know what? This is what I learned today. So my 11-year-old comes home, he's doing a jujitsu. Anybody do jujitsu or did jujitsu? Anyone? So he's 11 years old, okay? He gets in the car, and all he wants to talk about is sparring. He spars, all right? And I said, how did sparring go today? He said, went pretty good. I said, okay, what happened? He said, well, I was, uh, I was uh, grappling with Mary. I said, oh, grappling with Mary. Who's Mary? Oh, she's a nine-year-old in the class. Okay, I told you how old my son is. How old is Enzo? He's 11. Mary is nine. Mary's this tall, Enzo's about, about this tall, right? So I said, Enzo, how'd that go? Didn't go good, Dad, didn't go good. I said, uh, did she beat you? Oh yeah, she beat me pretty good. Beat me pretty good. He says, but you know what, dad? It's okay, because I'm learning. And I'm at this stage right now where I'm learning all the moves. She's been doing this for four years and I've only been doing this for two weeks. So I'm gonna get better. And so it's okay to lose and learn. And I sat there in the car and I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm like, yes. Now he could have gotten in the car and sat down and made what? Excuses of why he lost, right? Oh, the coach made me do this, all oh, the coach. He didn't make one excuse. He didn't, all he said was she's better than me and she's been doing this longer and I learned. And even at one point, it was so funny, she was holding him down to a point where he literally couldn't do anything. And she literally looked at him and she goes, I'm gonna go ahead and take a nap. She told that to him and he didn't lose his cool. I was so proud of my son. He literally was just like, I'm gonna learn through this. You see, that's the kind of mindset you have to have. When you lose, it's not the end. Failure is not fatal. Okay, it's not fatal. You can come back from that, right? Get back up and try again. You get to a point where you own it. You see the lesson, right? And you don't make excuses and you get back up and you get back in there. Now, Enzo was right back the next day at jujitsu. Didn't skip a beat. In fact, he hasn't missed a day in the last four weeks. This has been one of the only things that my son has been this passionate about. And every day he wants to wrestle me and it's no bueno, right? I'm like, you know, here, here, this is not gonna go good. He's gonna be beating me within the next two years. He is literally gonna be wiping the floor with me, okay? But here's the thing, when you fail, remember it's not fatal. You can fix that failure and learn from that failure. Now, I love this Willie Jolly quote, a setback is a setup for a comeback. 
Have you ever heard this? A setback is a setup for a come. Don't we lo love comeback stories? Don't we? I mean, have you ever seen Rudy? We love those movies. We love those movies. We love the idea of the comeback. But yet in our own lives, we don't look at ourselves like that. We think when we fail, it's just like, oh, I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll just go over here and I'll just pity party. No, no, no. You got to own it. Learn the lesson. Get back up and move forward. Because that's the only way you're going to stay in process. It's the only way you're going to stay in process. And that's the way you're going to end up where you truly want to be. Now, last but not least, health is wealth, okay? Health is wealth. Now, here's the thing. Um, I started running back in 2016 timeframe. I was in a boxing ring and, and it was a boxing class. There were two ladies in the class and me and we were doing this routine where I would punch on the bag and then the, uh, uh, Tony was in the middle and then he was kind of going around. So I'd punch, I'd back up and they'd punch and then so on. And we're going around in circles and circles. And then we get down into sit-ups right? And the, and the, the ladies in the class started talking about running. And I looked at one of the ladies, her name uh, uh, was Jamie. And, and I said, running is stupid. I don't run. I walk, you know? And she looked at me, she's like, get out there and run. What, what, what do you, what excuse do you have for not trying to run? And I go, well, I don't like it. And she said again, she goes, I challenge you to go run three miles. That's what she said. She looked me dead in my eye and she said, I challenge you to go run three miles. And I said, hmm, that's dumb. I don't want to do it. So I went and bought some shoes. And the next morning I went and I ran three miles. Now, what do you think was happening in that first mile? First mile. Oh, pain. Knees. Have you, anybody tried to run a mile recently? Raise your hand if you've run a mile recently. Nobody's run a mile recently? Okay, a few of you, right? You know, have, what about when you haven't run in a while and you go to run that first mile? And you know what my pace was? It was horrible. My pace was like 13, 14 minute miles. I mean, I, I might as well just been yogging. It was like a yog, you know what I mean? It was terrible. But guess what I did? I finished that three miles. I finished it, okay? And then I set a goal. I said, you know what? I'm going to run two to three days a week and I'm just going to, I'm going to stay in process long enough to see what the results could be. I'm going to set a goal. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to run a race. And then I ran a 10 K, I ran a 5 K. And then I started hearing my friends back in seven, the next year talking about a half marathon. Y'all know what a half marathon is? How long is a half marathon? 13.1, right? Anybody run a mar half marathon? Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So half marathon. So this was like, oh, I got to run a half marathon. My friends are doing it. Right. So I set this goal. Now, remember, what did I tell you about running? What did I say about running? I didn't like it. It's stupid. Right. It's, it's, why? Where, where am I going? You know, and my wife had uh, 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 my wife was telling me about a proverb. She says the reason why she doesn't run is Proverbs 28 one. You know, only a fool. Right. Runs when no one's chasing him. Right. <laughs> And she put that quote up on Instagram the other day and I just started laughing. I was like, man, I must be a real fool because I'm, I'm running a lot, right? So I set my goal. I set my sights. And then I started eliminating excuses. I started setting my mindset like I'm going to eliminate excuses. And so part of my process was I would put my workout clothes on the night before and I would have my shoes ready so I didn't have the excuse. Cause you know how sometimes you get up and it's like, yeah, I don't feel like working out today. It's nice and cozy in this bed. I set out my shoes. I had my clothes on. I now had no excuse because I wanted to get better in running. And then this happened. This is me crossing the finish line of San Antonio, the uh, full marathon in 2018. It all started from someone saying, go run three miles. Challenging me to go run three miles. And I stayed in process. And the end result of this is I've gotten in the best shape of my life. I'm 45. I've run three fulls and a bunch of halves. I just did a half this weekend in training, right? But here's the thing. The, those runners that you know, when you stay in process, it doesn't get easier. 
but the process makes the opportunity possible. If you step out of the process and you go, you know what, I don't feel like doing anything for a couple of weeks. I don't feel like running. I don't feel like doing. If once you step out, guess what? You now are putting yourself in a danger zone where you're going to go right back to your old mindset. So you see that growth mindset that I had gave me the ability to put myself in position. So now I'm training for an Ironman. Anybody know what an Ironman is? Right? So anybody's parents do an Ironman? Anybody have their parents do one yet? Yeah. So just uh, in, on August 22nd, let me tell you about my first Ironman experience, uh, my first triathlon experience. Everybody been to Bernie Lake? Who's been to Bernie Lake? Everybody been to Bernie Lake, right? So let me tell you what happens. I'm all excited because we create our own triathlon, me and three other friends, okay? We show up at Bernie Lake. We're all excited. Now, I've never done an open water swim. Has anybody ever tried to do an open water swim? You know what I'm talking, you know, swimming where like you're doing laps kind of deal, goggles, the whole thing. I start swimming and I immediately panic. Remember, this is my first triathlon. I've been training a lot and I've been swimming a lot. And I get to the point where I'm hyperventilating in Bernie Lake. This was on August 22nd. I had to flip over on my back and just go like this just to get control of my breathing, right? I finally make it out of the water and I'm like, whoa, that was the hardest thing I've ever done. I get on my bike and we take off and you know how you come out of Bernie Lake and you take that left? When you go, what, what, what is on, the other, on that side of Bernie Lake, what is over there? Nothing but what? Hills, lots of them. And we do a 12 mile bike ride. On the way back, something happened. I pull into Bernie Lake, and as I'm pulling in, you know how it has that little snake, that little snake, little turn thing that you have to go through? As I pull in, my handlebars collapse, I flip over the front, hit my head, and I don't know where I am, I didn't know who the president was, I didn't know what year it was, and I'm sitting on the side of the road, my friend comes up, and he's like, hey, what happened? And I go, I, I don't know, and they're like, hey, we're doing a triathlon. I didn't even know we were doing a triathlon. So immediately rushed me to the hospital where everybody's panicking, of course. I was in the hospital for two days because I hit my head pretty hard. I separated my AC joint in my shoulder, lots of injuries. And I'm sitting in the hospital trying to find what's the lesson in all of this, right? Now, I say all that because this, this is the right mindset, right? The mindset that I had to start thinking of is like, you know what? What I can learn from this is that I'm either going to put my bike up and just go, you know what, this isn't for me. I probably shouldn't do this. Or I'm gonna have the mindset of, you know what, what, what could I have done differently? How could I have better prepared myself? And how can I get back out there? And that's what I chose. And so I'm still training. Two weeks after the accident, I jump right back into running. I jump right back into biking. The only thing I can't do right now is swim because of my AC joint and my shoulder. But here's the thing that I want to tell you, please hear this, hear this. That fall could have been a lot worse, right? That fall, that could, there could have been a lot of other things that could have happened in that fall. But what I want to tell you is, is that that failure, I didn't even finish my first triathlon and it was a sprint. <laughs> I mean, it was like a, this short little thing. Didn't even get a chance to finish my first sprint triathlon. But my goal is in April, is that I'll do an Ironman. That's my goal, that's what I'm shooting for. So what I wanna tell you is, is that don't let a failure stop you from reaching the ultimate goal of wherever you wanna go. Because if you have a growth mindset, you can get there. If you have a fixed mindset and you think, well, I'm, oh man, or you get to your 40s, you're like, I'm 42, I'll never be able to run a marathon. I, there's no way that I could see that happening. Well, if you believe that, then guess what? It's gonna be true. So future you is waiting. Future you is waiting. And I don't want you to be like Homer Simpson. I don't want you to be like Homer and go, you know what, that's a problem for future Savannah. Ah, we'll worry about it later. That's a problem for future Ethan. That's a problem for future Jackson and Addison. No, 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 no. I want you to step in to the idea that your future is made in the moments right now by developing the mindset that is going to help you win today. So you need to reach. 
You need to reach toward future you and say, you know what, I'm gonna grab a hold of this and develop the right mindset, the growth mindset. And so look at this, success is never about the chosen few, it's about the few who choose. Those who choose to step into that responsibility, those who choose to engage in the process, those who acquire the steps of the value cycle, you see value in yourself, you add value to yourself, and you add value to others. And those who choose to change your view of failure and think about health as wealth and remember that your body is what's gonna determine whether you get to those ultimate goals. So take care of yourself. Uh, this is a little bit about me, how you can stay in touch. Don't worry about that. The website's on there. If you ever wanna see a video, I have that on there. I wanna thank the team the, uh, uh, for the opportunity to share this with you. And just know that, hey, I am a fellow struggler in the process, just like you, I have not arrived. You know what I always say? I, I still don't know what I wanna do when I grow up. I'm 45. I still don't know ultimately what I'm gonna do. Because if I keep staying in this process, do you think there are gonna be other opportunities open for me? There are gonna be other opportunities that I don't even see coming. But if I stay in that process, those opportunities will show themselves. Same goes with you, everybody that's here. Thank you so much.